Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'm going to explain you data hazards in pipeline structure. I'll explain you data hazards along with practical example as well as I'll explain you how we can resolve the issues of data hazard as well as there are three terminologies based on that there can be question based on competitive examination. So I'll explain you three different data hazard terminology in this video itself. So let us try to understand first what is the meaning of data hazard. Data hazard means operand conflict when you execute instructions. Here in pipeline what we do? Parallelly we execute instructions. But as if you observe first instruction is having few operands, second instruction is having few operands and as if operand dependency is there, then you can say there is data hazard. Let me explain you by practical example so that will give you more clarity. So here let us consider first we are having i1 instruction over here and we are having i2 instruction over here. In i1 instruction let us consider I am performing addition operation in which let us say r1, r2, r3 that is how we are having instructions and in second instruction let us say we are having another addition instruction in that we are having r4, r1, r5. Now if you observe here what we are doing is we are performing addition of these two and that addition that we are storing inside R1 right and if you observe here what we do we perform addition of these two and that we are storing inside R4 right. Now let us see how things are happening with respect to pipeline. So here I will be considering five stage pipeline. So here in first cycle we will be performing this i1 instruction first so instruction fetch then instruction decode then execute instruction then we will be performing memory then we will be performing write back stage right and you see here i2 that is getting fetch at second cycle then instruction decode that we do then execute instruction then memory and write back normally things will happen like this in pipeline structure right but if you observe how instruction is getting executed so you see R2 plus R3 that is getting added and result is getting stored inside R1 and if you observe here input operands so that is over here with R1 so that is depending on I1 so till you don't have answer over here you cannot use this operand. Now you see what will happen is when you execute I1 instruction your write back stage that will gives you result of R1 but if you observe here in I2 stage when you perform instruction decode operation at a time it will be taking older result right. So it will not take R1's result which is happening as per I1 but it will be taking somewhat else right. So what will happen during execution it will be creating false result inside R4 right. So this is what data dependency output of first instruction that is depending on second instructions input right. So that is actual dependency. And because of that what will happen here in execute you will be having false result in R4. See here what is happening is this result is depending on previous instruction. How? See R1 that was based on initial instruction till you don't execute that instruction you cannot modify the value of R1. You see here R2 plus R3 that will go inside R1 right. But that will happen at write back stage. You see this write back that will be modifying the content of R1. But before that in pipeline structure what will happen? Instruction decode that will load the value of R1 that is older one. New value that is getting updated over here after instruction cycle 5. Right. But during instruction cycle 3 there will be older value of R1 that is what input to this operand of add instruction. So there will be false result inside R4. Now question is how to resolve this. So here by having operand forwarding we can resolve this. Let me explain you how. See previously what was happening in write back stage there was a modification in R1 right. Now see in operand forwarding what will happen is see in between this stages there will be buffer resistor. Let me draw over here how buffer resistor is there. See in between all the stages there will be buffer resistor. Now in operand forwarding what we do is we forward the value of that buffer resistor to that decode stage right. 
so as execute is happening that buffer resistor that is having result of r1 you see that result of r1 that is there after execute stage so in execute stage that is there inside this buffer resistor so that buffer resistor will forward the value over here in instruction decode so now you don't have false value see result of r1 that will get modified over here only right in operand forwarding we don't update the value of r1 after execute we update the value of r1 after write back only but execute is having result and that result that will be forwarding over here in id stage instruction decode stage and as we are forwarding it over here correct value of execute will happen why the reason is that answer now that is what we are forwarding as operand over here and after write back only after write back only result of r1 will get modified but because of operand is getting forwarded over here you will be having correct result so here in operand forwarding you will be observing what we do is after every stage in between stage there will be buffer resistor that buffer resistor will be holding value of result right so in operand forwarding we provide that result as operand to id so that in execute stage you will be having correct answer right so many of the times in examination you will be observing there will be statement that will be written here we are using operand forwarding as if this statement is written at that time by default you will have to consider there will be no data hazard as if operand forwarding is happening at the time this type of data hazard that will never happen remember this right but as if it is not given then obviously you will have to consider a data hazard and as if data hazard is happening if operand forwarding is not given in that case you cannot execute that id stage over here right you will have to delay by this cycles and you'll have to start your execution from here onwards right and as if you start your execution from here onwards what will happen you'll have to stall this two clock cycles over here but operand forwarding can eliminate this now as i have told you there can be three terminologies based on that there can be question see the data dependency which i have told you right now that is raw dependency raw means r a w means read after write let me explain you how see in true dependency we will be reading after write so you see here what we are doing is we are reading over here after that we are writing over here right that's why it is referred as read after write let me explain you how over here so for that as if you have two instructions consecutively add let us say r1 comma r2 comma r3 and here i am having add let us say r4 comma r1 comma r5 so here what we are doing is you see when you execute this in pipeline that result is getting stored at write back stage right but before that you will have to execute this over here right so we will be reading after write we are reading it over here after that we are writing so that is how this raw means read after write that will happen and that is referred as actual or true dependency now how to identify that in cpu see whenever you have question based on calculation of number of raw dependency at that time how to calculate this let me explain you that see here we are having our output operands and these are my input operands so you just note down that first these are my input operands and here i am having output operands so you see my input operand that is getting dependent over here in next instruction with respect to output operand of first instruction right so here when you want to write this at that time you can say this is my input operand right and this input operand that is also referred as source operand so here i am writing input operand of next instruction that is having something common with first instructions of output operand and as if it is not zero means as if it is not phi then you can say there is raw dependency so you will have to check output operand of first instruction with respect to input operand right so that is how raw can be identified now second is write after read i'll explain the example so that it will gives you more clarity that is also referred as anti dependency let me explain you that by example so for example as if i perform add 
R1, R2, R3 first. After that, you see what I am doing is, I am performing add R2, R1, R3. Now, here if you observe this R1, that is depending over here. So, based on that, you can say this is my raw dependency. But if you observe here, my input operand, that is depending on output of next instruction. So, that is anti-dependency. Generally, anti-dependency, that does not create any issue. Right, that's why it is referred as anti-dependency. But sometimes you may need to solve some questions, right, in examination. At that time, they may ask you, find out how many anti-dependencies are there. Or they may ask you like this, find WAR, means right after read dependency in given program. So, in that case, you'll have to identify in this way. Let me explain you how. See, these are my input operands. And these are my output operands. Now, here you see what is happening. This input operand of first instruction that is depending on output of next instruction, right? So, in that case, you can say there is right after read. Over here, for this particular example, we are having two dependency. Raw is also there. You see, R1 of input, uh, sorry, R1 of first instruction means output of first instruction that is depending on input of next instruction. So that is there, but one more dependency is there. And to identify that statement is input operand of first instruction. You see input operand of first instruction that is having something common with output operand of next instruction. So as if it is not phi, means as, as if something is common in between that, then you can say there is right after read dependency. So this is how two cases are there. Now third case is WAW means right after write. That is referred as output dependency as well. Let me mention that. After that, I'll explain that by example even. So here you see WAW means right after write. That is also referred as output dependency. Let me take one example. For example, if I have add R1, R2, R3. After that, as if I have add R1, R4, R5. So here if you observe my output of both instruction that is depending on each other. What it means? This is WAW right after write dependency. So as if output operand of first instruction that is having something common with output operand of next instruction, then you can say there is WAW dependency that is also referred as output dependency. So I have seen many questions are coming based on this dependency. So you should have fair enough idea about what is the meaning of it. See the actual dependency that is RAW only raw, right? In that output of first instruction that will be depending on input of next instructions, right? This is actual or true dependency that you can say. But with right after read, you'll be observing input of first instruction that is depending on output of next instruction that is anti-dependency. And as if you have WAW means output of first instruction is depending on output of next instruction, right? So that is how dependencies are there. And there can be question based on how many dependencies are there based on program given to you. So one program will be written in that you'll have to identify how many raw is there, how many war is there, how many wow is there, right? So for that, you will have to understand first what is the meaning of this. And based on that, you can easily solve problems. I hope it is clear to you in future coming videos, I'll be solving at least 25 questions. So definitely, you'll be having fair enough idea about how to solve problem based on that. Still, if anything that you'd like to share it with me, note it down in comments. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.